Hi, welcome back to ODE. My name is Paulo and I'm here very excited to open this box. This box arrived today and it came from the Czech Republic. You can see there Česká Posta and this is a pen that I'm really interested to see and so let's open it because this will be a first of its kind to me. Victorinox knife and let's open it. I'm not sure where are the seams of this box but I don't think I'm going to take the tape out. I think I'm just going inside the box. Because I'm, I'm, I'm too, I have to confess, I'm too excited to wait to see what is inside. I just don't want to damage anything. And this is very well closed. Very hard to open, sorry. So, this pen was sent to me by a brand that is called Penteo and the person that is making these pens is called Teo that's why the brand is called Penteo and he makes pens by hand and And he decided to send me this one for review and I'm really really interested in showing that to you. So let's take the box and stuff aside and we have here lots of protective material which is good because we don't want to have this beautiful pen ruined in the mail. I know I'm taking a little bit too long, but I have to I have to take my time. I'm it's very hard to, to tell you because I know I don't show you. Sometimes it's hard to check it in my in my voice and mostly because I'm not a, an English native speaker. But I'm very excited with this, I'm really excited and so sometimes I, I enjoy taking a little time to open things when I'm excited with them. This is really a unique piece and I'm really happy. So, take this away and let's take the box out of the wrapping paper. Okay, now let's check it. I will put the camera a little bit down and show you. We have here a box that says Penteo and handmade pens made of wood with this bird logo engraved. And now let's open it and check it. First, inside of this nice box we have a couple of things. We have a pen stand or a pen rest which is very nice made of wood. I'll talk about it in a second. Then we have a pen and we have a leather pouch. It is somehow similar to a leather pouch I already have from Penteo that came with another pen but now the the logo is embossed instead of being engraved and I think this is a little bit nicer and let's take a look at the pen and now I cannot cut these uh, in any crazy way with the knife because I do not want to ruin the pen. 
So let me take a little bit. And here I have the pen. And it looks, for me it looks great. I don't know what you think about it, but I think this is an amazing pen. I'm really, really happy for having it. So, what is that? This is, the, the model of the, of the pen is called Penteo Samurai. It is a very beautiful pen. It has a nice weight to it. Really nice. So, let's see what... I, I think this is amazing, the finish. It, it is so perfect. I, I, really, I really like it. What do I have in my hands? It is the Penteo Samurai and it is made, uh, Penteo Samurai, ironwood, because it is made of ironwood. And ironwood is quite heavy, like you see here on this pen rest. And what, which is the difference between this and this? These have a very uh, thin layer of urushi, just to seal the, the pen rest. But the pen has a long urushi work over it. So this is my first urushi pen. Now let's uncap it. And we have a nice medium nib. The other one has a fine nib. The other one that I have, the other pen tail. But because this is a regular medium yovo nib, if I want at any point I can just unscrew this nib from the pen and exchange with that one. And this is a, an interesting pen that is made of wood, the barrel and the cap. And this section is not made of wood, it's actually made of ebonite with some texture applied to it. And you can feel the texture here. It's it's interesting. It's it's really it's really nice. And the rest of the pen is made of wood. The section is made of ebonite. You can unscrew the pen, long threads, and you have a cartridge converter pen. So with a Tombow converter. So the pen is ready to work and I think this is a beautiful beautiful piece. I I just want to to show you a couple of things. I will I will try not to make this very long because I really want to ink this pen up and start writing with it. This pen I have another pen that has a kind of a similar design, which is this Penteo Bonita, oversized black. I've showed you this pen before, several times in my channel. I've been, I have this pen used and I dropped it for a very long time. And this pen was very shiny, now it's getting more, some more oxidation in some places, not so shiny anymore, but it is a pen made of ebonite, so it's quite light, although it is big, and it could be eyedroppered. And it is a very nice piece. This one is much heavier, which is interesting. It is made of wood, that very dense iron wood, which is a very nice material, which has some wood grain, beautiful wood grain. I have to make another video just to show you the grain of the, of the wood, but I'll need to change a little bit the, the lighting. And it is very, very reflective. So this is that wood and it is covered with uh, some, quite a lot of Urushi layers. I have to, to say something because this is really important to me. Uh, when Theo told me he was going to send me this pen, I asked to make... Uh, a video call to him to talk about the pen and why is this pen not just a wood pen because I believe there is lots of work 
in this. This pen can retail for around 500 euros, so not inexpensive. And you can find some other pens made of wood out there that are much less expensive. And there are differences. I think this is a, a whole process with lots of very interesting details. First, the pen came, the, the, the wood. Let's talk to be from the beginning. Um, Theo is from Romania. Romania. He works and lives in Czech Republic, but he gets the he got this wood from the United States. So this is iron wood that comes from Arizona in the United States. And as far as I understood, it has to be uh, collected in a sustainable way, so it is only available uh, from dead trees that they, they are some parts collected and they, then they are, can be worked. Uh, this is a very hard wood, very dense, and it has lots, lots of work on it. So, you have here a lot of urushi layers because you, you, have the, you have the wood, you have to turn the wood into a pen, then you need to seal the wood with the urushi layer, then you have to put several urushi layers on top of them to send them, to apply them again, to and it can take maybe over one month to make one pen. So this takes a lot of work. The threads inside the cap, you can see it's kind of a, a lip there with an insert. The threads are made of ebonite. Also, the threads here of the section are made of ebonite. The section itself is made of ebonite with a different technique that is brushed with a very hard brush and then several layers are applied to make these this uh, finish and it takes lots 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 of layers and sanding or polishing between them until he can reach this very glossy effect that in fact will protect the pen for a long time wood is always a uh, material that can absorb stuff like oils or water but this way it is sealed with this urushi lacquer and the urushi I think it helps to give more sense of, of depth about the wood grain and I think this is stunning uh, and I think this is quite hard because these things need to the materials some come from the United States then the final urushi lacquer comes came from Japan and lots of places where things need to come from we have a pandemic going on so it's harder to source all the components and it takes really a long time so if you have if you are willing to pay this price, you can be sure that you are not only buying a writing instrument, but you are buying all the history that is behind this pen. And I have to say that I find that very, very attractive, because you're not just buying a pen made of wood that you don't know much more about it and they can have a very good pen made of wood but in this case you know that th this uh, wood comes from a specific species of tree it is iron wood it comes from the united states from the arizona desert and it is turned the lacquer comes comes from japan the the ebonite of the section i don't remember where he told me it came from so he had to do it in separate pieces to assemble them and there is something that he told me and I think it's crazy is that for applying each lacquer, you, each um, layer of urushi, which is a lacquer, you need to have a completely dust-free 
environment otherwise it will have speckles of um, dust on the pen so and it can ruin the process maybe when he's finishing just because there is some dust then it has he has to uh, sand it all again apply urushi again let it dry in the perfect conditions of humidity it, it is it is crazy i think this is a crazy work and it's that's why you have this kind of prices and this kind of feeling. I, I think I will make a specific video, not only the review that I will make, of course, but I'll have to make a specific video about the value of the pens. I really believe that if you want a pen, you can pay very, very, you can buy one pen very cheaply, but you may want more layers of history on the pen. This pen has several layers of urushi applied, but this pen also has several layers of its own its own life. You know, the, there is the investment of the people making it, uh, the investment on the raw materials, everything comes from one place with uh, from different places with a specific reason and I think that is amazing because it's not just a pen that comes from somewhere and you know nothing about it about this pen now I know quite a lot and I know this is a lot 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 of work so I can understand the kind of price if you are willing to pay the price one pen like this costs it is another stuff but I really understand the pen can cost a lot because this is not an easy technique to do. So, I can talk a little more specifically on the several stages of the process that he has to go through to make the pen, but today I just wanted to give you a, a glimpse of it. I will use this pen and I think I will treasure it a lot because a pen that has some some background to me it makes a lot of sense and thank you also for the little pen stand I think that this pen really deserves a special place in my collection my first Rushi pen and I am so pleased with it so Theo thank you so much for sending me this pen I will review it and I will let you all know what I think about it. So, I'll see you next video. Bye!